Hello and welcome to the show. I am here today on automation, going to be building a rather different car to my normal style, as I'm going to try and build a classic American luxury barge, essentially. Normally I would focus on building a crazy powerful little sports car or general silliness, but this time, yeah, we're going to try and build a luxury vehicle. I don't really know how good I'm going to be at building a luxury vehicle, but I'm going to <laughs> give it a try. Now we are going to set our little calendar up here to 1971, which means we only have technology available to us that uh, was around in this era, as you can see from the, the body styles of the vehicles. So first of all, we do need to pick uh, a vehicle to work with. Now we need to go for a relatively large, should we go for, um, we kind of want to go for these uh, to uh, what's, what's the large? Okay, these are the largest of vehicles that uh, <laughs> we can get. That is a rectangle. It's basically been drawn on an etch sketch. It's kind of a Lincoln Continental style of vehicle. Or we have the uh, this more sort of a Cadillac Eldorado styled of car. I do like the little fins on the back of it though. It does look quite cool. Or we can go for a really old style of uh, of car. Is that a Oh wow, there's a pickup version. <laughs> that's quite cool. Quite like the pickup version, but that's kind of not what we're going for here. We've got a convertible version. Uh, what have we got in slightly smaller wheelbases? So this is still a relatively sizable, okay, it's kind of more generic, uh, generic saloon car, or I think, ah, yeah, this would kind of be ideal, go for like a bigger state or something. For some reason, some of the, the mod, or the Steam Workshop bodies that I've got for this game apparently no longer work. I don't quite know why, but there we go. Um, that's more of a, that's a slightly odd looking muscle car. Uh, what have we got down here? Um, oh, we could go for, I'm quite tempted to go for kind of like a bit of a, a luxury estate sort of a thing. That could be quite fun, actually. Yeah, let's go for that. We're going to go try and build a luxury estate car. <laughs> so, so, yeah, an old, uh, maybe Ford Country Squire style of vehicle. I thought that I know very much about these kind of cars whatsoever. Literally, the <laughs> Forza is, is my only real experience. We don't see, I mean, we see plenty of estate cars, but not certainly not the, the older American uh, vehicles. You just don't see them in England. So, yeah, I know very little about these, but we're going to give it a try. Now, you'll often see me extending the wheel arches out so that we can hopefully get some wider tyres on the car might make it handle a little bit better and, and so on and so forth and make it look slightly less stupid than having the uh, little bicycle wheels. Now, I'm going to have to think about different stuff to what I normally go for because, I'm just going to select one so I can have a look through the slightly different options. Normally, the ratings that I go for are sportiness. That's kind of the primary concern. Sportiness and lightness. But this time out, we're more about prestige. We're more about comfort. And that's not stuff that I tend to look for. So I don't actually know quite what is going to be best. And of course, we do, while yes, it's going to be a more luxury car, we do still want it to be, you know, vaguely affordable, vaguely competitive, and so on. So our chassis type. Uh, we have this not well. Prestige is kind of average on all of them. Yeah, they're all kind of average. Average prestige. Uh, the monocoque is slightly is uh, considerably safer than the ladder, uh, but of course it will be more expensive. Does it actually say the cost? No, it does not. Space frame is no mass production, so we won't go for that one. Uh, shall we go for the monocoque and the steel or galvanized? The galvanized steel is basically just slightly better on corrosion. Everything else is pretty much the same. So we'll stick with normal steel, a little bit cheaper. We will go for a... Uh, we, want drive, we want drivability high. We want drivability to be to be high. We want it to be easy to drive and comfortable and so on. So while that's got slightly more cabin space, this has got much better drivability. Front longitudinal. It is right. Suspension comfort. Comfort is going to be most important in all of this. So naturally out of those two options, yes, it is more expensive, but... Uh, we want the double wishbone suspension. Now, the back of the vehicle, uh, again, we want comfort uh, to be high. Uh, we have got... I was just looking at load capacity as well on the back of it. I guess if you were kind of like building like a pickup truck or something, load capacity 
extremely high and so on would be useful. I don't know if you can hear that. Sorry, there's a fighter jet just going around. I've been doing it the last couple of days around where I live. I guess we've been doing training exercises from somewhere. A lot of fighter jets going, going flying around. So, yeah, sorry if that uh, comes through on the mic. Uh, we shall go. I'm still thinking comfort. Still thinking comfort and drivability. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> we will stick with, stick with that. Panel material. Uh, again, we will be mass-produced, or I want it to be a uh, effectively a mass-produced vehicle, so we won't count. We won't uh, do the aluminium, even though that does give us higher prestige, uh, relatively uh, high safety, average prestige steel. Steel, it is on this. Now we get to play around with the headlights. What are we going to do with the front of this vehicle? Uh, I'm not actually sure. I quite like the front of that. Can I do anything? Uh, I think I prefer that a little bit more than the, what, what we had. Can we... Oh, um, sure, that, that'll do. That will do. Back onto the fixtures. Just kind of finding a nice a nice place to try and put the headlights on this car. Let's see what the... Oh, I'm not sure about them at all. <laughs> no, no, I don't like them, definitely. Uh, what about if we go for kind of this... Style. It does kind of look quite mean, especially <laughs> if we can get it to go. Um, kind of looks very angry, very angry with that. <laughs> we won't go for we won't go for them ones. Um, okay, these might might look a little bit better. I'm a little bit more happy happy with these. I don't know. I think it's because it's so tall at the front. It's kind of a little bit awkward to work with. It looks slightly out of proportion. I don't think I can actually do much about the height there. What about circle headlights? Maybe all the <laughs> really tidy, tidy circle headlights. <laughs> okay. Oh, <man. laughs> we shall go for some giant bug eyes on the front of this. Um, I might actually... No. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I was going to say I might actually prefer these over what some of the stuff we've already had. I don't know. None of these are really suiting the car very well. These might work, actually. If we can twist... Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to twist them. Oh, the oh, the rotation is a little wonky at times with here, these. But uh, I'm slightly happier with that, I think. Uh, perhaps to do with being... A, <laughs> it's actually quite difficult. I can't say... Oh, normally I have a, a slightly better idea of what I want to do with the front of a car, but... um. Yeah, sure. I don't know. The thing about this body is slightly, slightly odd angles. Stuff doesn't just quite sit so neatly. But that is going to do. That will do on there. Uh, shall we go for a nice smiley? <laughs> There's so many. Uh, oh, actually, what we could go for now. The cars. I uh, don't really want that. <laughs> There's so many vents that look like smiley faces. I kind of just want a. a square or this sort of a, a vent that works actually for me quite nicely. Don't really want uh, crazy smiley faces on all of my cars. Sometimes it's funny, but uh, on this instance, uh, perhaps not quite so much. Uh, I am thinking, do we go for kind of like a double grill on the front here? Uh, maybe like a little bit taller. Uh, like something like that? Uh, I'm relatively okay with that, actually. Sure, it's not going to be the prettiest of cars. And uh, First of all, it's designed by me. And second of all, uh, it's a little bit, uh, well, it's not exactly the most inspiring of shapes. However, I'm okay. I'm okay with the front. I don't hate it. So <laughs> then we'll have to do, uh, what should we do around the back here? Um, uh, I kind of want, I'm sure there is uh, sort of stuff on the Steam Workshop for kind of like tower. Uh, oh, no, I've gone, I keep, keep doing that from time to time. I kind of want like little tower lights to go out the side. I guess you could sort of put, these and then can we put these and spin them around uh possibly although it's really fiddly to get it to go quite right um yeah i guess you sort of could do that i wonder i've just noticed there's all of these different kind of options in here for sort of styles of i don't actually dislike them on the back of this vehicle sure you know what we will we will take them but uh yeah i, I mean, there are ways you can fiddle about with these ones but uh yeah, proper tower lights, I think, would probably look slightly better on this had I thought about it uh, initially, but there we go. Uh, one thing I would like to do, where will it be under... Is it this one here? We'll give it... Just kind of like give it that little that little indentation, you know, where a number plate would go. It just kind of 
adds a little bit of variation to the vehicle. Can we fit one down there? Uh, no, not quite. <laughs> it looks a little bit odd. The front sort of, I guess front, oh, actually, never really used these successfully, but could we put this on here? Because uh, I can say, like, the front sort of lip doesn't really come down very far on this vehicle. So maybe if we use the actual lips tab I've, that I've never used before, no, it doesn't quite come down where I want it to. Uh, I think it looks weirder with that on it than it does just going down like that. So <laughs> that will have to do. Uh, at the back of the car, was there anything else we were going to do? I guess we could. Uh, no. <laughs> there is. I, I, I'm sure better designers could come up with more interesting stuff. I, my brain just doesn't work particularly well in that manner. Oh, door handles. Yes, we will stick with the kind of chromey theme for this car. Oh, uh, click on the tick would be helpful. Door handles over there, and we will need some exhaust. Plenty of space to put them on this vehicle. So there we go. I say plenty of space. I actually don't want to have them on. It looks like the whole thing is kind of like the the boot um, there, which is a little bit peculiar. Never mind. Okay, they are going to have to go down there because I haven't really got much other space to uh, to put them on. Never mind. That'll do. Um, yeah, it's okay. I think it's not my ugliest car. That's for sure. Uh, we will. Stick some badges on it as well. No space on the front, so we'll stick it on the bonnet. And we will stick one at the back as well. Okay, that is our vehicle ready to go, pretty much. Aside from, of course, having to be orange. That looks all right. And we are going to have it as rear-wheel drive. We're not going to go for a 4x4. Uh, a four four. Um, yeah, right. On to the engine next. A V8, naturally, is uh, what we are going to be going for here. A relatively sizable one as well. You know, while we're not looking for a uh, huge high performance out of this one, we still want it to be able to, you know, move. So I'm thinking perhaps we go for around uh, maybe a five, five and a half litre. Five and a half litre V8. Maybe, maybe we should go a little bit crazier. Uh Almost uh, six litre V8. Sure, you know, what? <laughs> let's go for it. Let's go for a six litre V8 in our. I mean, that's <laughs> there were much larger ones around, so yeah, we will stick with that one. Now there are various uh, options uh, down here. Uh, you know, gradually getting more and more expensive. I would like some decent performance out of the vehicle, so we are. We're not going to go with the. Uh, <laughs> push rod very very rudimentary stuff we aren't too worried about rpm as such this isn't going to be a crazy high revving racing engine that i tend to build it's going to be more about torque so yeah we'll worry about that when we come to it uh do we want i mean this is slightly more slightly more expensive i think it's probably going to be worth it we are though going to stay with cast iron head for this uh crank we um sure again i do kind of want to have decent talk from it so we are going to go for some of the forged stuff and do we i guess probably yeah that'll do as well I mean, if we're doing that bit forged then we might as well go for the rest of it in that uh, in that manner yeah we'll stick with stick with that okay six liter um I know I say I was trying to build it a, a more luxury thing and not quite such a sporty thing, but I, I'm still drawn to at least getting a half decent power figures out of this. And if we can accidentally build it quite quick, then I'm more than okay <laughs> with that. Um, sure, we'll stick with that style. Uh, we'll come back, of course, and do all the compression ratios and whatnot. We're not going to have, or we can't have any turbos on the vehicle. Now, I guess, kind of accurately, we should go for... Uh, carburetor uh, we want one is going so max power 428 uh, should we go for quad sure okay now that works for me uh, <laughs> okay don't require max power 1712 horsepower yeah that'll be fine that'll be more than enough for uh, <laughs> for us uh, airflow fuel efficiency very low perhaps we um, don't want we want, we want fuel efficiency to be better so shall we go for a four barrel? There we go. And then this will give us max power 685. We're unlikely to be worrying about that 
anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, shall we go? We'll go for a race one. We'll go for we'll go for a performance one. Sure, we'll go for regular uh, quality of fuel. Uh, we'll come back and fiddle with that later. Um, because we're not going to be worrying about uh, max power. Uh, we're probably not going to need more than 428 uh, horsepower out of this. Uh, we'll go for double exhausts, though. Duh, no, no catalytic converters. Shall we just go for none? <laughs> we shall just make it really, really noisy. No, no, that's not good for luxury, is it? It's not good for luxury. We've got to bear that in mind. <laughs> we, we, we've got to we've got to keep in mind the luxury. Oh, why is that all flashing at us? Right, stop start and stop all of that. Right, okay. The engine is only producing 127 torque. That is not going to do. Uh, that will not do whatsoever. What have we got unhappy with here? Valve float. Uh, okay, compression. Let's have a play around with the compression. This bit down here. Right, okay. Tune back on the compression a little bit. That's more like it. <laughs> it's much more like it. 344 foot-pounds of torque, 318 horsepower. Oh, God, now I'm just going to go, ooh, how much power can we get out of it? Can we go crazy? No, we're just going to go too crazy. Uh, I don't think it's really liking all this RPM. It's not like, yeah, okay, so 5,000 RPM limit. Um, Even then, some of these bits are still... Re What's reaching its RPM limit? Maybe if we go that, that keeps it happier than that. It is slightly, uh, slightly cheaper, sure. We'll go with that. Um, all right, fuel mixture. Um, I mean, this is let's face it. This is you know pretty decent, pretty, pretty decent power figures and so on going on from this vehicle. You know, we're looking at about three thirty-five horsepower. Yeah, okay, I'll take that. Three thirty-five horsepower, three sixty-nine torque. Uh, what have we got going on over here? Economy is not going to be good. Reliability is okay. Weight is. Well, whatever. He's going to be heavy, really. <laughs> Material cost isn't too bad. Uh, can we push the RPM any more now? We've we'll swapped that down there. Uh, uh, to be fair, I think 5,000 is <laughs> probably going to be... What does it go? Okay, about 5,200 is where it hits its power. So, this is max power. But again, you know, it's not so massively important. Reliability, perhaps the more important. Well, reliability actually doesn't really make a huge difference. Sure, no, we'll go 5,200 RPM. 342 horsepower. Uh, I'm still doing the whole, let's make as much power as we can. Ooh, and then if we, ooh, careful, if we just have the exhaust as small as we can get away with, uh, so that we don't have any, uh, what's the word for it? Um, waste, essentially. I can't think of the right term for it when you have the exhaust is too, too large, but yeah. Okay, almost 400 torque in this. I'm relatively content with this engine, actually. Shall we have a play around with it? Uh, start the engine up. Wait, if we go skip and then we go test mode. That's how we do it. Right, uh, information bits here. Go away. Right. Now we can play around. Oh, when we, when we fire the engine up, would be useful. We can now play around with our engine. It's the, <laughs> the power delivery is so much smoother than the normal so the, the last few stuff i've done have been crazy turbo engines to get ludicrous power out of you know, relatively small engines and this is just nice and smooth power and torque and so <laughs> and so on yeah okay kind of sensible engine built by me i say kind of sensible it's it's still quite a lot of power and so on but never mind we should keep going automatic uh comfort very high and that's the important bit so, comfort and drivability is high. I think it's the first time I've ever built an automatic car on this game, ever. So, yeah, <laughs> we will go for a... We'll go for three. Three years. I reckon we can do 156. I want this to do 156 miles an hour. That'd be incredible. Um, we'll give it some... Like, the nice long gear ratios do also help with the uh, fuel economy as well, which is likely to be bad, but never mind. Uh, we want uh, as much comfort as possible. That's off-roading stuff. That's comfort low. Uh, drive, no, we're, we're leaving it with an open diff. It won't be fantastic, but, you know, it'll have to do. Uh, spacing? What is space? Okay, spacing is kind of just adjusting the gear ratios within the gearbox. Again, I can't say I've ever particularly messed around with that, but never mind. Right, tyres. We want drivability. Uh, we want drivability very high, uh, relatively low. Um, cost as well for this. Now... <laughs> Bugger, we are going to be stuck with just 
tiniest of wheels, basically, on here. Can we get... Oh, there we go. That's a little bit more like it. 185s I'm a little happier with on this monster. Uh, we can't do any more than that. I think if we make them smaller, we can make the tyre widths slightly bigger. So... 205, considering the kind of power and torque, I think we'd probably want that on on our car. Do we want to also have them just a little bit further out? Because I did extend the wheel arches, so I don't want it to look too stupid. Front, press do with one more. Right, and wheels. Um, You see, this is normally what I go for for all of my vehicles, but I'm not sure it quite looks right on this. I think I might actually stay with these. Uh, or maybe... Hmm... No, actually, I think these kind of suit the car a little bit more. At least to me, it does anyway. Certainly more than my normal. <laughs> they don't work really. <laughs> on there, that'll do. Yeah, we're not going to go for alloy wheels particularly on this one. Uh, although that is a little bit higher. Magnesium wheels is very high prestige, but very bloody expensive. Maybe we'll go for alloy wheels just to up that prestige for relatively little in the way of money. Um... Sure, they're alloy wheels, but they look like steel wheels, but never mind. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, brakes, yes, we're going to want we're going to want decent brakes on the front. Um, we will go for drum brakes on the rear, though we will have relatively large drum brakes on the rear. Try and keep costs down a little bit on here, but it still needs to be drivable. So I'm assuming having better brakes will up the drivability of the car. Uh, under tray, you no, know, we're not going to have any of that on our vehicle. Cooling flow required cooling is 356. We will put this down as low as we can to reduce drag on the car. I think that's how it works. Anyway, seats, we're going to go for five seats. Now, for the interior, of course, we want comfort to be as high as possible. Uh, we, we do kind of want luxury, although I did say I do still want it to be kind of a, a, be able to be mass produced. So, of course, handmade can't be. Luxury is limited production. I guess it's probably going to be a limited number of people after one of these kind of things. So, <laughs> sure, we will go. Oh, that's expensive. The, lu the the entertainment. Okay, the luxury eight track entertainment is almost as expensive as the entire engine, material cost wise. <laughs> Bloody hell, that is a lot. Maybe we'll just go for the premium. That is a lot of money going. And this is not quite exactly Rolls-Royce rivaling kind of a vehicle here. And safety, let's go for advanced. That's not too bad, cost-wise. We'll go for advanced on that one. Okay, springs, what have we got down here? Ooh, do we go for... It's expensive. It's very... <laughs> very expensive for all that yeah we're probably not quite uh but then again it's kind of that that's our real only only choice in turn i guess uh what have we got down there mm. i mean i guess we save money on not going for the really luxury entertainment system this is completely wrong for a Amer classic american vehicle now but it's never mind basically <laughs> we're going for comfort or, um i mean that's uh, i don't know if that having that and that we have kind of average and average, and that's uh, I don't quite know what the the difference having like the because that's got yeah two bits on average, whereas that one there the dampers are going to be low. Um, I guess we'll try. I'll try and stick a little bit more with my theme of of. <laughs> I guess that that would probably be more um closer to to theme. I guess although that does give a slightly better. Drive a bit, you know. We'll, we'll try and stay. We'll come. I'll come back. Okay, we, we want comfort down here. Uh, I will. I will come back if we're not looking like we're getting anywhere near close enough to being uh, luxurious enough. Right. Uh, there we go. Where is uh, prestige? Comfort is only twenty-eight. Uh, on his safety is uh, forty-four. What's reliability? Reliability tends to be uh, fifty-four. Practicality is the strong suit of this car. I don't quite know what. Um, uh yeah comfort i think we could we could do with getting comfort up some more uh, in here so maybe we will have to go back we'll go with these and see how that goes on the whole comfort rating that should that drops us up to or jumps us up to 32.5 uh, it does shoot the cost up a little bit more what else can we do like i don't really know how to build the, the cars as comfortable as possible normally aside from doing these things okay, sure shall we go for really really silly uh okay we are again the you know the the, the cost is um 
the, the total cost, I don't think I'd like to jump up more with, with that one, but uh, yeah, that has added to the weight, I suspect, somewhat. <laughs> yeah, one and a half tons on the weight is 12.3 miles a gallon. Comfort's up at 42.3. Uh, let's have a look. Shall we go see what it does on the on the test track? <laughs> 150 miles an hour. 0 to 62 takes just 8 seconds on this one. Right, you know what? Let's go. We will do our normal test of send it around the 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 top gear track. It is um, likely to be, I imagine rather difficult to, to drive. There is a lot of weight, I suspect, a lot of body roll, and um, yeah, probably not a lot of grip available, but nevertheless, we shall see, and I have got my list of Top Gear lap times, so we can compare it to, well, probably the bottom of the day. <laughs> if this thing somehow miraculously goes quick, I will be I will be impressed by my uh, <laughs> by my um ability to, I guess, build odd vehicles. What have we got? Quarter of a mile takes 15.6 seconds at 102 miles an hour. 50, that doesn't sound for, for a relatively sort of luxury, well, as luxury as I kind of build my cars, let's face it. That doesn't sound too bad. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's definitely not the quickest of things. Can we actually go and watch the sector times. Oh, it actually shows us, okay, so we don't have to watch the whole lap through. We can just go and click over here. Okay, so its total time was a 136.3. That will have us go quicker than a... It's quicker than a Saab 95 Aero, a Civic Type R. Uh, it is quicker than mostly, the, most of these laps are the wet laps, basically. Uh, quicker than Alfa Romeo Brera 2.2. Um... And that's about it. It's about the same time as a Clio V6 that spun in the very wet, apparently. Uh, or the Aston Martin Vanquish that was in the very, very wet. And that's quite an old Vanquish as well. Um, slightly slower than a Citroen C4 VTS. I th <laughs> I've built a performance estate car, or, or a semi-performance estate car. For, for, the, for the age, this thing would be monstrously quick in 71. Uh, this would be, yeah, <laughs> 150 miles an hour would be... It would be quicker, it would top out at higher speeds than the muscle cars at the time because they'd run out of gears at around, well, long before 150 miles an hour. There's not like 130-ish or whatever. So, yeah, I am uh, I'm quite impressed. I do just wonder, if we tune this down... I've never really played around with like the comfort sliders on here. It doesn't really make a huge amount of difference to comfort, and I suspect it makes a massive difference to like drivability and so on. So I would keep drivability up more with uh, with this if we can because uh, yeah i suspect this is just gonna small change small increase in comfort yeah bigger drop in it's not massive drop in drivability to be fair uh can we change anything down here now that's just drivability very high and so on around there uh it's probably i've probably still got too crazy an engine to be honest i just can't resist the opportunity to get a <laughs> 400 odd horsepower engine into this one. What was this engine? Uh, is that the. Uh, there we go. That's the thing that we wanted. Yeah, okay. Not quite 400 horsepower. Sorry. 400 torque engine, 360 horsepower. Not bad engine, really, for for the car. Oh, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with this one. I'm not sure quite how well it sticks to theme, but shush. Uh, <laughs> we've got our kind of classic, kind of a classic performance estate car going on here and relatively comfortable by look for, for a fair race automobile this is about as comfortable as you're going to get basically uh, on this yeah it's it's kind of affordable as well 7625 total cost that's like material cost and so on. i'm not quite going to go into the whole uh buildy side of uh, things yet like the, the whole production side of things i should say i just wanted to kind of focus on the on the building bits and pieces i yeah, I could probably do better slightly on the on the economy on the you know, miles a gallon side and whatnot, but uh, I quite like having the power and the torque. So yeah, there we go. That is my attempt at a relatively luxurious, prestigious, comfortable, um, classic. It was ended up as more of a performance estate, but there we go. <laughs> that is it for this uh, video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time. 
Uh, goodbye.